Okay, hello. This is a very quick tutorial on how to graph your growth curve data. So the first thing is go to the MicroBio 304 Canvas site. You'll see one announcement here. It says link to growth curve on the Google Doc. Go there. Click on the link to the growth curve on the Google Doc. Come here. And then what you're going to want to do is when you get that data, click on File and download as, and you're going to say Microsoft Excel. This will download it to your computer. I'm using Chrome here, so you can see that it downloaded it. And I'm going to say Show in Finder. Okay, it shows it in Finder. It's right here. So if I take that and I'm going to open that with Excel, okay, it comes up. Okay, and here's all the data. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do and you have the four different data and it's in minutes. First thing you want to going to want to do is you're going to want to consolidate the data because you have all the data up here. You're going to want to take that and you're going to want to consolidate it so that you have the minutes, the A600 and the viable count in nice tables and then also you can average the stuff in the data. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to average the data for the technical replicates. Now I made a decision that I am going to average the times. So take the two times, like this one was taken at five and nine minutes. These are taken at zero, zero. We're gonna just, I'll call that zero because technically it's close enough. It's probably gonna, not gonna make a huge difference in the accuracy. So, so the first, thing is I'm going to put come down here put equals and then if I just click on this cell right here it transfers that and then I'm going to do the time time zero right and I'm going to say the next cell I'm going to say equals and then if I click on this cell and say add 20 minutes because that's what it was supposed to be it'll add 20 more minutes to it then I can take this just drag it down until I get to 380. Okay, that's 400, so I'll drag it up a little bit. That's 380. And the last point, I'm just going to say 1470. Okay, so we now got those points. Now what we're going to do is the next thing is A600. So I'm going to call this one A600 28-1. Make that dash 1. And then you go equals average parentheses, and I'm going to grab those two readings, and they're up here. So I'll grab those two readings, put a parentheses down, and hit return. And you have to do it through those all. Go through it again. You type in equals, type ever, average. And then select the next two, and that's the 20 minute, 20 minute time point. So those two, and then ding, boom. Okay, now one more. It takes equals, and we're going to type average. And if we go up here, we see that there's one 45 point, and there's not another. But in other places, in other parts of the table, and we want to use this over and over, there was a value. So we're going to say both of these. Excel is smart enough if there's no number entered it just ignores it. Right? Okay, so now in, in, you continue to do that through all your tables and an interest in cooking shows. I have my table over here, so we're going to switch to this document and my table's all been set up. And you'll notice I did the same thing. I have the average of every one of these and the average of the volleyball play counts at 28.1 20, degrees. And you're going to want to do that for all the different tables. If you run into sections, like shown right here, like 120 minutes, and if you go back up and look at 120 minutes, no one took values there. You just leave those blank. So leave that average blank. Right? So they've all been averaged. I've averaged a table here. I've averaged the table for the net for the 37 degree one and for the 37 degree two. So I've got all those. All right, so then we come down. And I will do uh, the viable play count. So what I've done now 
is if I come down here, I have taken the values from the viable play count at 28 degrees. So what I did is I just said this equals F54. And if we go over there, all I'm doing is transferring the values over so it's easier to deal with. So here is, right, viable play count is at F54. So I just transfer that over. Your value might be a little different, but you just want to say equals and then click on it. And I've done that for all these. So this one I said equals. And you go over to here, right, and you go F56, right, and then just return, records it. Now, very convenient thing you can do with Excel is I'm just going to delete all these, right. So I've done the first one value in each one of those tables. See this little square here? If you click on that and drag, it enters them all in for you. So we can just click and drag, and it knows to copy that you actually want the next cell down. So it copies them all over, and we can get all of these values over here very easily. Okay, now. Okay, this one is the average of these two over here. So to calculate the average, it just goes equal average of, and you click and drag those two values. Boom, got it. And then you can just drag down, and there they go. So the same thing. This is equal average of, this time it's going to be the 37 degree values. Click and drag. Boom, or just in, click drag there and then click and drag right here. Boom, you got the whole thing. All right, now let's see how our data worked out. You can graph the time minutes after inoculation. I'm going to actually change this to time in minutes, right? Because that's what it is. You can actually click and drag across all of this and then graph each one individually, I've decided to actually you know, click and drag. Now hold on down the command key. I've clicked and dragged on this column, which is VPC 28 degrees average, and then clicked and dragged on this column, which is 20, 37 degree average. So I'm actually going to graph the averages. You can do what you want. If you want to graph all of them separately, you can do that too. All right, so. I've got them here. All right, so what then I'm going to do is I want to make a chart. So I go up to insert chart and we want XY scatter. Okay, so it inserts an XY scatter chart. And the nice thing is it's labeled what these things are. It has also the minutes are appropriately in scale and you know the scales are correct, but there are some things we want to fix. The the growth data should always be in a logarithmic growth curve. And this is why you can see all the numbers are crunched down here. This looks really ugly. And then they're up here. And that doesn't really rep represent the data in a way we want to understand it. So you're going to want to change this title to um, growth curve. And then what it, you know, some nice title. I'm not going to say what the title is because I want you to come up with that. Okay, so we click on the vertical axis, the Y axis, and we go over here and we click a little bar and it gives us the options for the axis and then click on axis options and you'll notice down here you can make it logarithmic scale, okay, and that's better but we don't need it to start at 1. We want it to add the lowest values about 1 exponent of 6, so we'll start at 1 exponent of 6, okay, we're getting there. And then the other thing you don't like about this is that th this is not using scientific notation consistently. So we'll go down here under number, change the category to scientific notation, and then I'll you know, clean it up a little bit. We don't need all those zeros. Okay, beautiful. All right, we're getting there. Done. Pretty. All right. Now, the other thing is, we're going to, the time in minutes is okay. If you want to fool around with this, you can. 
click on that, that's fine. You might want to make your major access like 50 minutes and your minor 10, so it does more numbers on there. Maybe that's too many, so we'll say 120, and there we go. That looks really nice. We want to leave this linear scale quite visible, etc., etc. All right, now the other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to put a line on here. Uh, so if we have then, the other thing is come up here, change the chart type to XY scatter and scatter with straight lines and markers. And that what it looks like. This is pretty nice. Now the things that you'd want to do is you'd want to add a label here that says time and minutes. You'd want to add a label here that says viable play count. And of course you want to put in its description, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll leave that as an exercise for you. That's pretty easy to do from there. Okay, now we have a really nice graph. But one thing you'll notice that's kind of interesting is it seems like these kind of points level off or they might be a little bit different. I mean, they're not that much higher than here. What's going on? If we go back to our data, we'll notice there was a mistake here because there's two zeros. And if you go back to the data, that's because the, these data points weren't taken for 37.2. So if we delete these, we now get those values go up and it's probably more accurate to what the curve is. Okay, so there's a very nice data. So now that we have our wonderful data, what we're going to do next is we are going to calculate uh, the growth rate. Now, what you could do is kind of guess where a line was and pick two points that are close or do something like that. We're not going to do that. We're going to use Excel to help us. So let's look at where the best data range is. And if you look at it, it looks like after this point, after about 100 minutes, that's when you start to see both of them start going into log phase. So we're going to say, you know, the other thing is, I notice, notice this point right here is really, really high. That seems a little bit weird, but you know what? We're going to leave that one in there. All right, so to probably let's do about 160 minutes to 360 because that seems to be, after that, this one levels off. So we'll do 160 to 360. And so what you do is you come up here again, and we'll just click out of here, and you select 160 to 360. And then we're going to do 160 to 360 again, and then 160 to 360 in the 37 degree. All right, now we'll go again, we'll say insert chart, XY scatter. There's our little chart. Drag it down here. We'll expand it so we can see it. Uh, we don't need, so click on the horizontal x-axis, we don't need anything before 150. So we'll go to format access, we'll go to access options, change the, the min to 150. Everything else seems okay. Now one thing that's a little confusing, it's calling this series one and series two, so let's fix that. Click on the chart anywhere and it says select data and you'll see that the name is not selected so we are going to name these right the name of series one is the r is the w column for the y values so we will just click you know click here to shrink it so you can select bpc average 28 hit return and then on series two we'll click on that name little thing we'll click on bpc 37 average and now they all have nice labels. That makes a lot more sense. So if we scroll down here, BPC average 28 there. Okay, now the other thing is you can see that it's like the last values are really huge and this one's swapping everything out. So again, we want to change the scale here for this for the, hor the vertical axis or the Y axis. Just go there, axis options, make it logarithmic, begin at 1e to the 6th, and there we go. Now we've got our nice data here. Now let's get a trend line. How do you do that? Well, if you just click on a data series and then right-click on it, you can say Add Trend Line. And we're going to add an exponential trend line to it. We'll do the other one. Click on it. Go Add Trend Line. And again, exponential. And you're going to want to put Display this equation on the chart and display the R-squared value. I forgot to do that on another one, so I'll click on the other trend line right here, and I'll click on those two boxes. Now we go. There's the two equations right here. 
Now we're going to use these and we're going to plug them in. So I have calculated the, I've put a table down here with two different values in it. You can see them right here. And those are just going to be random values in there. And we are going to then calculate absorbance values for there's actually viable plate count values, VPC and VPC. And then from that, we're going to calculate our K and T gen. Now, the viable plate count, we're going to calculate by using this trend line, right? And the trend line here is 6E to the 6, all right, 6 times 10 to the 6, E to the 0.0136X. So that, so you just do equals, and it's 6E to the 6 times, right? EXP, which is exponent or, or, or E value of 0 0.0136, because that's what it is, 0 0.0136, and that gets multiplied by the X value. Parentheses, boom, there it is. Now we can just drag this down. It gives us that one. All right, now we have to do this other equation but I'm late, so we come down here again, equals, and it's 2e to the 6th this time, 2e to the 6th times the exponent of, and it's 0 0.01, right, times the x value, boom, and then we click and drag. Okay, so those are two values on the line, the value at 200 minutes and the value at 300 minutes and we can use those now to calculate our growth rate so again just remember the growth rate is equal to 3.32 times the log of your higher number your later time minus the log at your previous time divided by later time minus earlier time. Boom. Okay, so that's what it is. That's the growth rate for this one. Generation time is just one over the, that value, right? So that would be equals one over your K value, and that's 51 minutes. Okay, now we've got this formula. We can just copy it, paste it here, and we can just copy the TGen and paste it there. So, at 37 degrees using all this thing, the T generation time was 51 minutes. At, six, at uh, 28 degrees, the generation time was 70 minutes. All right, so make sure that you hand in a nice chart and you calculate the growth rates, and this is one method to do it. And from there, you're all done. You should do the same thing with the optical density.